happy Friday and welcome to Stamp in Peace with Mary Nave. I hope you're having a good day. Um, the weekend is upon us and uh, just trying to finish some things up. And then I have um, a friend coming in a little bit. Tracy's going to spend the weekend with me and we're going to do lots of crafting. Tracy's actually on my team um, and we do try to get together several times um, through the year to craft together. So looking forward to having her. And then also um, about four o'clock today, I'll be picking up um, the bride and groom, the newlyweds, Andrea and John, uh, at the Columbus airport. Um, they, uh, gosh, they texted me. It must have been around midnight last night that they were waiting on their flight. They are not ready to leave, they said. They were not ready to leave Hawaii, but how can you blame them, right? Um, but again, welcome. I'm glad you're here. It's Funfold Friday, and I really think you're going to like today's project. Before then, I'll throw out a quick reminder. We've got um, three current catalogs, our annual that started in, uh, what was it, May, and then our new holiday catalog, as well as the celebration brochure. Um, I did want to point something out about the celebration brochure that I may have forgotten to say. Um, anything in the July, August celebration catalog um, is available while supplies last only. Um, at this point, I think everything is still available, but if you have your heart set on any one or two things or all of it, please know that um, it is while supplies last only. Um, and if I place orders, I do try to um, get a few extras of things just in case um, somebody misses out on what they want, but there are no guarantees on that part. So um, today I am going to be using what is my favorite item from the celebration brochure. And that is the Wonderful World Bundle. You get a great stamp set and gorgeous designer series paper. So that's what I'm using today for Funfold Friday. I'm going to flip my camera around now. And while I'm doing that, I ask that you would share this live video and invite others to join us for today's project. First of all, let me show you those. Um, oh, I forgot to show you my happy mail. Let's do that first. Um, this is a card I received from Lori Hall. She's a frequent viewer here on my Facebook Lives. And I just thought it was really darling. Just a very simple, easy layout. But it has such a nice, um, warm feeling, friendly feeling, cheerful and then she also wanted to mention this again. She's the person that um, gave me this wonderful idea because she does it herself. When she mails cards that have embellishments that stand up, she has taken one of the U's, maybe from my uh, classes to go, I don't know, but she cuts apart the bubble envelope that the classes to go come in or she gets packages in. And that's what she places on top of her card before she slides it in the envelope. That way there's no bumps that get caught on the USPS machines. Um, and I always stick a piece of cardstock in. And I thought, what a great idea. She's reusing and then she's not using up her good cardstock either. So I love that idea. And then I also got this card from, I have to remember, Judy Harmon. Judy Harmon. Isn't that pretty? This um, suite was out, oh, maybe two years ago, I'm thinking. But I wanted to read this inside. She enclosed a sea turtle poem that I thought was really neat. I've never heard it. Maybe you have. Um, but if either way, I'd like to share it with you. Sea turtle wisdom. Travel at your own pace. Stay calm under pressure, trust the flow, be comfortable in your own shell, enjoy time alone, keep moving forward, right? What great little pieces of wisdom. I love that kind of thing. 
And many of you know I love inspirational quotes and um, things like that. So that was super awesome. And then this is one um, from Jenny Graber. She often watches as well as the others. And um, this was made from a Memories and More card pack. So super simple. Jenny knows um, that it's okay and often, and encouraged, really, to make simple cards. And the Memories and More cards are a great way to do that. All right, so now I've shown you my happy mail because I know you love getting happy mail and so do I, so why not share it, right? So here is the stamp set, Wonderful World, and then the 12 by 12 designer series paper that goes with it. This is one of the celebration options. It is an option with a $100 purchase, okay? But it's a great value for what you're getting. Um, the DSP is absolutely stunning. With this, I picture myself cutting out these individual flowers and using them on card fronts um, and or even some um, scrapbook pages. And I even thought about making a collage of some sort with all these different beautiful flowers. And then here's another small print of flowers. I love the colors. I love all of the colors in this DSP. Isn't that gorgeous? My um, white lilies just finished blooming outside a few days ago. And then a small print. This would be nice to cut in rows too and for making simple cards or using as a border on a scrapbook page. And then here is um, a sheet with lots more flowers. And I'm thinking these would be fun to punch or die cut out and make something fun with those. And then on the back, we have various um, patterns and images, lots of fun colors again. Um, so definitely something you can use for a wide variety of projects, of um, occasions, and um, definitely something I think you will enjoy. And again, that's from the Celebration Catalog. So I'm first going to show you my sample today. This is a trifold card with a belly band, all right? Trifold card with a belly band. And Melon Mambo is the cardstock that I chose to use with this paper. But there are several other colors you can choose from. So again, and I use the belly band to hold this card closed and it slips on and off quite easily. So let me show you now how to make this. You're going to start with a piece of cardstock that measures five and a half by 11 inches, okay? Five and a half by 11 inches. And you are going to score this. Let me double check my, Let's see, where did I have it? Checking my cheat sheet here. Okay, so 11, five and a half by 11 inches, and we're going to score starting at four and a quarter inches. I'm going to flip this over. We're going to be doing um, some accordion folding. So every other one, I wanna flip the paper over. Um, it just helps give us a nice crisp score line when we're flipping, um, when we're folding in opposite directions. That's why I flip it. And then I'm going to flip again and score at nine and three quarters. So that was four and a quarter, seven inches, and nine and three quarters. Okay, four and a quarter. I flipped it seven inches flipped it again and did nine and three quarters inch. I'll use my bone folder and you can see this that where it goes um, where there's an indentation like the valley that becomes the outside. A, a customer would always say the valley becomes the mountain. Okay the indentation is the valley and you fold it so it becomes a mountain. And then the other two are just going to be folded in the opposite direction. 
and go over both sides when you have a fun fold card and there's lots of um, folds and layers you want to make sure to give it a very nice crease and then I pre-cut some white cardstock and some designer series paper and I'm just going to lay this here and I will tell you the measurements so that's that and then this one will be on the front so as you can see I have four different um, coordinating sheets of designer series paper that I used all right and you can mix and match you know this would have been a great one to go with that um, you know flip them try the different sides but I just start out by laying out all six sheets and looking at both sides and then choosing four patterns that I think fit well together and I typically am choosing from the same package of designer series paper, but you don't always have to. You could pull something from um, another package of DSP, or you could use our six by six color family DSPs also. So this first piece measures four and a quarter, no, four inches by five and a quarter, five and a quarter by four inches. That's pretty standard size. And then these two pieces are the same size. You want a piece of designer series paper and a piece of white or a neutral that goes with your DSP. So these measure um, two and a half by five and a quarter. Let me double check that. Yes, two and a half by five and a quarter. Now I am not going to um, stamp a sentiment on here. I will be giving this card away, so I'm going to leave it blank. Um, there are no sentiments in this wonderful world stamp set, just the flowers and the leaves, but you could pull a sentiment from any of your stamp sets. Um, you could also stamp an image here if you want it, a little flower, some leaves, something like that. So two and a half by five and a quarter for these. And then your last two pieces of DSP will be on this small portion, small section of the cardstock, one for the front and one for the back. And these both measure five and a quarter by one inch, five and a quarter by one inch. So one on the front and one on the back. So now my base is all finished. And doesn't it look pretty? It looks pretty when it's closed and it looks pretty when it's open, right? So now we need to make the belly band for the um, enclosure. And I'm changing the size of my belly band because on my sample, um, I cut all my pieces out and then when I put the sample together, I thought the belly band was just a little too short. Remember, we cut our cardstock five and a half by 11 inches, so you've got this three inch piece. So use this for your belly band. Um, this is going to be, for this demonstration, I'm using one and a half. Now, a lot of times my belly bands are just one inch wide, and it's really whatever you want it to be. And it could be based on the image or the sentiment or anything you're putting on front. So this is one and a half by 11, and I'm just going to cut off like one inch and honestly you don't even have to some people find it easier just to 
cut it down to size and others are, you know, just go with the flow and you can snip it. You've seen me done that, do that with my belly bands. But you want to make sure that it's long enough that it does overlap, the two ends overlap, okay? So I'm just going to, and I do not score my belly bands. Some people may tell you to do that, and if you're comfortable with that, that's fine. I don't, and the reason is this fold, like this fold is going to be super easy because it's only going around one thickness here. But over here on the other side, it's going through one, two, three, four thicknesses of the cardstock. So even if I would size it so that the two score lines are four and a quarter inches apart, just like the card base, chances are it's not going to be quite right because of the thickness here on my left side. So what I like to do is just fold one side over and then I just fold that other side over. I'm doing it so that my seam is in the front. And the reason for that, if you've been with me for a while, you know this. The reason I like to do that is because then I can hide my seam. Oops, trying to bring this a little closer for you and I've got this all out of whack. Okay, is that better for you to see? So, when you're doing this, remember, keep your adhesive only where it's going to meet the other side of the cardstock. So an easy way to think of it is if you lay this out, you know this is going to fold over. Just put a line of adhesive on each end, and that will be plenty. And then since I'm using multi-purpose glue, I'll just hold it in place for a few seconds for it to dry. And then we're gonna dress up this belly band. Keep in mind that when you're doing the fold over and um, adhering the ends together, you want it to fit snug, but loose enough that it will slide on and off easily, okay? I'm going to also introduce you to another product, new product in our um, annual catalog. And this is one I really love. It is called Stylish Shapes Dies, Stylish Shapes. So as you can see, it's got the banner shapes, it's got squares and circles in various different sizes. And you'll see what's really cool about this, when you die cut these, there will be this decorative, almost like a pierced edge all the way around the inside, but what's left has that nice edge also. So sometimes you maybe are um, die cutting to have a window, you're making a window card, or you're gonna fit a picture in behind there or something but you'll still get that nice decorative edge on both the um, positive and negative sides. So I've got a piece of scrap paper. You'll recognize this as being one of the DSPs I used for my card. And I'm going to cut out this large banner shape from the stylish, stylish, shapes, dies. So oftentimes when we're cutting out banner pieces, we're thinking about um, using it for a sentiment. This is different. This time I'm using it as um, a decorative piece. But right here, let me move this. Oh! And a tray with scraps on it just fell in my lap. Um, so here you can see, you get that decorative edge on the inside piece as well as um, that negative space going all the way around the shape. So I'm going to adhere this right here. And then we're going to do a little stamping and die cutting for 
our focal focal piece on the front of this belly band. I am using this, I don't know what, it could, I guess it could be a rose, it could be ranunculus, um, but I'm using this floral stamp. And it is one stamp, but I want two colors on it. There are several ways to do that. You have seen me do that where I color in one part with a stamp and write marker, and then maybe I would color the leaves and stem with a different stamp and write marker. Um, what I'm going to do today is use some ink spots, some stampin spots. Now we sell a set of stampin spots in our annual catalog. And um, it's a great set for beginners or if you're just starting your collection of ink pads because you get some very basic colors. We don't sell, we used to many, 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 many years ago, sell the ink spots in all the different color families. We don't do that anymore. But there is a set of, I believe it's eight, eight or ten ink spots that you can find in the annual catalog. It's one collection. Um, that's a great starter kit and gives you some of our most popular colors and a wide variety of colors. So you certainly have plenty to work with. These spots are actually from my paper pumpkin kits. Uh, because I have all the large pads, I typically just put all of these in a container when I get my paper pumpkin kits. And if I want to gift somebody a project or help somebody get started, um, especially with kids, um, sometimes people need projects for children. And I think, you know, I've sent some to my littles at times. Um, and they're also great for traveling. You can come up with a set of your own just by saving them from the paper pumpkin kits and then take these with you when you go to your crops and um, weekend crafting sessions instead of bringing all the great big ones too. But anyways, they are the same ink as our large pads. Oops, I just got my finger in that. Let me wipe that off of my Simply Chamois. <laughs> so what I'm going to do to get the two colors on here, I'm going to move that so I don't drop an ink pad on it. I'm just going to lightly tap the ink on here. This is one of those real detailed stamps, so you don't want to over ink. That looks pretty good. And, oh, okay, I thought I cut enough there. Let me try again. Mary. When I made my sample, I'm like, there it is. When I made my sample, I realized I pulled old olive instead of the pear pizzazz, or I could have used mossy meadow too. I just, I guess it doesn't really matter. I don't even know that anybody even noticed that. Do you notice I didn't have the wrong green? Well, old olive seems to go well with um, pretty much all of our colors and most of the greens. Oh, come on. Oh, that's why. It's got a label on the other side. And I only cut two sides. I thought, what's going on here, Mary? Come on, you have a little strength. There we go. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to dab the ink on the bottom portion. So you can see with these small ink pads, um, I can have a lot of control of where I'm putting the two different colors. Well, I just tap it on there. And I'm going to stamp it right in the center here. And look how pretty that is. Okay, the colors overlapped a teeny tiny bit there. I do wanna show you something. Here's a trick that I, um, I find is helpful. So, you know, I'll just tap the green on here first some green ink on. 
Okay, you see that? Okay, look what I did here. I got a little too much green on. I went, um, took that green and got onto the actual flower blossom. So I'm just gonna use a blender pen. These that come in packs of three in our annual catalog. And what I'm going to do is just remove that little bit of green ink. I'm gonna pick it up with my blender pen because I don't want that green ink on the flower. And then I come back in with my Melon Mambo and tap some ink on there. Okay, so that's just a little um, helpful tip. And see, I took care of that. I got that um, green off the flower section and you only see the Melon Mambo there. If you get just a tiny bit on like I did on my first one, it's hardly even noticeable. I don't worry about it, okay? So now I am ready to die cut this. How pretty. And isn't it simple? I mean, there's so much dimension in this stamp set. Look at this. But it's really not at all intimidating when you're just tapping on a little glue. Another, or not glue, ink. Another way you could um, add the two colors of ink is by using your um, sponge daubers. You know, just dab into the ink pad and then using the dauber, dab it onto the stamp itself. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways to add the ink. You can um, do it with your Stampin' Write markers. You can do it with the ink pads directly onto the stamp. And then you can also um, daub on the ink. Some people even use blender pens, but just because I want the two different colors and it gets close, um, I think these other options are a little better. You know what, Barbara, sometimes we put too much ink on and we're pressing too hard. So try that. If um, And typically we say tap, tap, tap into the ink pad. But I know like photopolymer stamps, really, um, you don't need to tap, tap, tap. You just kind of lay it on gently and it will pick up the ink pretty easily or you tap much lighter. A lot of times people are actually pushing into the ink pad instead of just tap, tap, tap. The other thing is, um, once you have the ink on the stamp, a lot of people are pressing too hard when they're putting it onto the cardstock. Um, you know what, I'll show you an example of what I mean and how to work that out. It does take some practice. I know when I first started stamping, um, Sometimes I would press too hard and I didn't, you know, I'd get an edge or it just looked kind of muddy. Um, and then, so I would try to stamp lighter, use less pressure next time. And then it wasn't quite heavy enough pressure. <laughs> so it is kind of a guessing game at first, but honestly, the more you do it, you just get better and better. So please don't think you that stamping is not for you because I don't believe that one bit. Um, and I don't want you to believe that. It just takes some practice and um, just kind of finding the right pressure, all right? And oftentimes, I mean, you see me doing this and sometimes I may make a mistake and I just re-stamp on another piece of cardstock. Um, but... Um, Oh, you're saying it's, you'll try, it seems like the ink doesn't seem to cover the whole stamp. Okay, so let me finish this and I'll show you a, some stamping tips. I'm going to use those beautiful iridescent pearls from our annual catalog. I love these. And just add two to the front right there. So as you can see, this is a gorgeous card. You can use it for so many different occasions. How would you use it? I'm thinking birthday, thinking of you, um, 
just because, um, what else? It could be sympathy. Um, what else could it be? It could be a congratulations on your promotion, congratulations on your retirement, um, a simple hello card, all kinds of things, okay? So this card I am going to give away. So if you are watching, if you are watching and would like to be entered into the drawing to receive this card, type in the comments now, wonderful world. Okay, wonderful world. And I will draw a name later today for one lucky winner. And I will say, let's see here. Vicki Rhodes is the winner of the pocket card we made on Wednesday evenings, Facebook Live. If you missed that, um, please go back. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get it uploaded to my blog yet, but it will be there soon. But you can still view the video right here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nate. Okay, so let's talk about the stamping a little bit. Um, you know what? I am just going to, let's see, I want to use a different one. Let's use this. This is kind of a big image. So easier to see. And I'm going to pull some scrap. We had some things from the wedding that we stamped extra of, or printed extra, I should say. So here's an example. And I'm going to, and the other thing is to keep in mind what kind of uh, ink pads that you're using. And the reason I say that, most of our ink pads are like this, the classic Stampin' Pads, right? And they've got the foam if um, you've bought yours in recent year years. And then we also sell like our Memento ink, which I use a lot. And this is different because it has a linen pad and you have to press a little harder, that sort of thing. So kind of think in terms of that too. I usually, especially with a new stamp, w will, um, stamp it out on scrap first before I actually do my project. So here, I'm just going to tap, tap, tap. Okay, notice I didn't push. Just tap, tap, tap. All right. And I'm just going to set it down, straight down. Do not push, do not wiggle it. But you can just apply some even pressure like that and you get a nice clear image. Let me show you what happens. Yes, the size of block can make a difference too. You're right. Um, let me tell you, show you what happens when you're pressing too hard in the ink pad. Okay, some people like to push. They don't tap, they push, okay? And what happens is now you have ink everywhere. You have more ink than you need. You have more ink um, in places where you don't need the ink to be. We even have ink on the block. And then they'll push really, really hard and wiggle it around and you get something like this. Notice the difference in the detail here, okay? And notice it even picked up some ink from some of those negative spaces and the edge around it. All right, so again, tap, 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 and this is with rubber stamps especially. And look, I'm getting a nice clean image again. All right, so there's a couple of reasons why it might look blotchy. Um, let me clean this off. Another thing to think is, um, and Barbara, I know you've been um, buying an offhand. I can't remember if you've been buying, getting new ink pads from Stampin' Up. Um, not sure if there is enough ink in my stamp pad. So depending on the length or, or the time, how old you've um, that stamp pad is or how long you've had it, that could be. And you may need to um, 
purchase an ink refill for it and add some to it. The other thing is sometimes our stamps are blotchy. Let me do this rose one. Sometimes our stamps are blotchy. I'm trying to think, do I have a real new ink pad that I haven't used much? Um, how about Starry Sky? Okay, I've used Starry Sky a few times, but you can see it, it looks brand new. But sometimes the ink pads themselves are super juicy. Maybe when you get them at first, um, and then, and it was doing this with the, this is probably not, see, and I'm putting, actually putting, you don't see the detail as well on the rows. Whereas I stamp, 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 kind of hold it in place, one, two, three, and now you can see more detail. Whereas this is much more splotchy. Um, sometimes this is not a good example because it's not oversaturated. Try and think. Some just sometimes, let's see here. No. Sometimes when you get a brand new pad, see most I stamp a lot, so they might be new, but as soon as they're used, um I correct the problem if there is one. Let me try this one. I know when some people were saying when they were stamping the bird, the songbird, that it was getting um, splotchy. And one thing I will say about that is if you have an ink pad and it seems to be too saturated, use the back of a wooden spoon. I have um, an old bone folder that I use. And what I'll do is just kind of push some of the ink out so you can see it's lighter here in the center where I push some ink away. And then clean this off because I don't want to mix the inks. So I can go tap, tap, tap. Okay. So I can see the detail real well. If it were too wet, and sometimes that happens. Sometimes I, it gets dry and I'm re-inking and I realize I have too much on there. Sometimes I just take like a piece of scrap paper and scrape some of the ink off. Sometimes I just use that bone folder or the back of a uh, plastic spoon and move the, um, what do I wanna say? Move the ink away from the center. You might need to move your image over when you tap. Go center, left, right. Good tip, Heidi. Sometimes, you know, it's just normal that when we go to stamp or ink up our pads, we go right to the center. Okay, and this especially happened with our old pads. And it uses up the ink that's in the center. So what Heidi's saying is maybe ink up over on the right side or over on the left side or sometimes move it around especially with large images um, sometimes you need to move it around because if you're always stamping in the middle you're using up the ink that's in the center and you've got excess ink around the edges I mean you can see right here look how dark it is on the edges of my ink pad that's because I don't stamp there as often and remember when I said, where's an example? Here, this little leaf. We could do this little leaf. Remember, um, I've said, when you're doing something small, don't go to the center because it's too easy to get too much ink. Just go to the edges and tap a little. Okay? Or if you have something teeny tiny, like maybe these leaves, just tap it right in the corner. There's going to be plenty of ink right there. Okay, so um, Barbara, keep trying, keep practicing, um, and don't give up, okay? Don't give up. This craft is too much fun and too awesome, and you can make so many great things with this craft that I don't ever want to see you give up. But just give it some practice, and, um, you know, if you're still having trouble after a few weeks, call me and you and I can either FaceTime or Zoom. And that way I can see exactly what you're doing 
and see how your ink pads look, that sort of thing. So that may help you, okay? But um, please, please don't give up. That would break my heart, okay? And thank you to, um, oh gosh, who all was contributing? Katie, Heidi, I know many of you were giving some advice also. Anyways, thank you for spending part of your Friday afternoon with me. I hope you have a great weekend. Um, be good to yourself and do something fun and perhaps get a little creative time in also. I will see you Monday at 2 right here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nave. And if you have not already, type the words Wonderful World in the comments to be entered into the drawing to um, receive this gorgeous trifold card with a belly band. All right, everybody, <clears throat> I will see you soon. Happy stamping.